Yo, what up? It's Compton Rick Rock with Compton Rick Rock TV. But before we get into this, let's jump into this. You're now watching Compton Rick Rock TV. Yeah. Man, Black Sam then started something. Black Sam then started something. He got the internet in the uproar. He got the internet blazing. He got him talking, y'all. Uh, Black Sam just did an interview with Big Boy on Big Boy TV. And in that interview, he had a whole lot to say about his brother and broke down a lot of details about the incident that happened in the parking lot at the Marathon store. From that point, everybody on the Internet took it in their own hands to become detectives. Everybody is putting their own little pieces and their own little twists to this story. Now, we all seen the interview, and I believe the interview was one of the best interviews that I've seen in a long time because it was heartfelt. I felt that. Like I said, I lost a brother myself. So when I heard the hurt and the pain in this man, I felt it. And it's a whole lot of people that felt it, that felt the same way about it. Uh, yeah, man, I seen a lot of guys on the Internet referencing Big U. Um, yeah, Big U is one of the main guys in L.A. that's known in L.A. And in my opinion, one of the biggest uh, crips in today's time from that section. And, you know, all over, everybody knows who this man is. Um, when I had my dealings, you know, my little run ins with uh, Big U, everything that everybody is saying about him, I haven't seen any of that, man. Like I say, when I seen the man, the man was respected and everything that they say about him that when I seen him happens to be true. When he walks through the door, I've seen people attitudes change and I've seen people respect the man. Point blank period. I'm going to get credit with credit. Is due. Now, what he done outside of that, what he do that other people might know of him, I don't know that about him. I don't know. So I only could speak what I know. If I know good things about you, I'm gonna speak good things about you. And if I know bad things about you, then hey, it's just that's just how the dice roll. I don't put smut on people, I don't talk about people if it's not true that I don't know. I gotta see it with my own eyes to speak on it. I can't go off what nobody else is saying because that's not how I was raised. That's not how I was taught. We don't do that. We keep it 100. Now, a lot of people taking this interview with Black Sam and Big Boy, and they all they all putting a twist on it, and they saying that Big U has something to do with this. Nowhere in this interview did Black Sam mention Big U's name one time. So for the YouTubers and everybody else on social media to put his name with this interview, associate his name with this interview as if Black Sam said Big U sent Eric Holder. That's crazy, man. That's definitely doing the work of the police. Uh, that's police work, and we're going to just keep it 100. I got to speak it how, how it is, and I can't take no signs with this. I got to keep it 100. Uh, the police, they are very intelligent. They are not uh, this dumb. Uh, they wouldn't have been around this long. They do very, very good work. At arresting criminals And if this man was guilty of anything And if he did anything Trust me He would have been in jail by now They not done Look how they call Julio Fulio's killers In 30 days He definitely would have been arrested If he had anything to do with this Eric Holder didn't get in court And say anything about this man He didn't bring this man up at all now, rest in peace to the late Nipsey Hussle, uh, one of the best to do this hip hop thing, one of the best motivation. That, one, he gave a people a, a lot of people hope, especially the youngsters, man. He let the young people know if I can do it, you can do it as well. Just put your mind to it and do it. Uh, yeah, man, this this rolling 60s. Let me tell you all something about this neighborhood right here, man. Uh, a lot of my youth was spent incarcerated. And this definitely is one neighborhood. They got a whole bunch of riders, whole bunch of riders from this hood, from this set right here. I was locked up with them. These dudes, uh, they wasn't no cowards. They wasn't no pushovers. They depth, especially the ones that I met solid 100. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what they got going on in their backyard, that's their backyard business. 
uh, it really it's really nobody business. So I got to keep it gangster on this one. Uh, a lot of this stuff that's going on about this man, uh, a lot of people is taking sides because once you hear something about somebody for so long, you start to believe it, right? This man uh, definitely has set the standards on the West Coast in L.A., period. He's one of the guys that made it to where you can't just walk in nobody's hometown and, and, and take up all the resources and come out here and, and play us and use us. Nah, he made sure that when you came out here, you know, you, you like they say, you got to check in. And it's not checking in as if he's telling you guys, uh, you got to do this and you got to do that. No, the reason for checking in is because you might end up somewhere you don't got no business going. And his job is to say, you know what, if you associated with us, if you hanging out with us, if you come out here, I know this land mode better than anybody else. I'm in the entertainment business. So let's keep it in the entertainment business. Don't go over here. Don't go over here. Because this what happen. This what can happen uh, if you go over here. I didn't went to New York. I had to call in. I didn't went to Miami. I had to call in people that I know that know people out here. I called them people, made sure I tapped in with them people and everything was smooth. That's just how I go. I remember one time one of my homies was doing this battle rap thing and somebody from a uh, 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 Philly called. Hey, you know, your boys out here in bed, they need any, you know, and, and they was there. That's just how it goes. Uh, a lot of people is saying a whole lot of stuff about this man, you know. And one thing I know about the gang culture, I don't care how it's painted on the Internet. One thing about gang culture, if you foul. If you did anything foul, nobody is bigger than the program. Nobody is above the law. Anybody can get it. So that goes to tell me that if nobody did nothing to this man, if they say he did all this, if nobody did nothing to this man, don't that makes him. Let's 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 think with logic right here. Don't that make him uh, uh, somebody that somebody don't want to play with or people don't want to play with? If he did all this and me knowing that these dudes over there is some riders because I know a whole lot of them. They not busters. I know a whole lot of them, you know, but that's nobody business. That's they hood politics. They hood business. It's not for the Internet. But let's get back to Black Sam. Black Sam, man, I salute you on the interview you did, homie. Good. Good interview made me want to go down to the new marathon store and purchase some items and support the cause. Black Sam did not say anything about Big U. He didn't mention Big U name. However, he said it, whatever way that he said it to make anybody think that he didn't say it. So if he didn't say this man name, why is people on the Internet saying his name? With this interview trying to connect the dots to this interview I did a piece on Black Sam and Big uh, Big Boys Interview myself And in the interview it said Black Sam knows who sent Eric Holder Because the way that Black Sam broke it down He said it seems as if old boy was sent He could have been sent by anybody It makes sense what he's saying but he did not say this man sent him. And if he did, Black Sam keeping it way gangster than any, excuse me, than anybody on the Internet. Because if he knew, he would have said it. If he was looking for clout, if he was chasing Internet fame, but he's not chasing Internet fame. He's not chasing clout. He got morals standards principles and he knows there's certain things that you can't speak up on on the internet and call it content creating or call it content you can't do that big you have a lot of enemies it's people that i know that beef with him you know what i'm saying but we're not taking no signs on here we keeping it gangster and I'd be a fake ass nigga if I didn't keep it gangster. A lot of this stuff that's going on on the Internet is sucker shit. Whoever get offended by it, oh, well, take it how it is, because we know better. 
A lot of the dudes that's on the internet, we know better. We know that certain things we don't post to speak about. We know that certain things that we talk about is documented and recorded. We know that this stuff could get used in court like the YSL Woody, Woody, whatever his name is. Y'all not paying attention to that. Y'all not paying attention to this young thug case to where they got this dude in court. Now he's saying, I recall, I recall, I don't remember that. Well, you recalled and you remember the day that you was in the police department telling on this man. You didn't make this man mess out on millions of dollars because as it, like he said, I told them police whatever I had to tell them to get them off of me and get the spotlight off of me. It's a lot of people that's doing that. Now, this is what I got to say about the whole thing. If I was a guy that was getting talked about on the Internet. I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that. And I show up in the places that I know I don't supposed to be. Why ain't nobody doing nothing to me? Why? This man, I see him all the time in his hood. I see him all the time in his hood. And I want the world to know these dudes is not no busters. Y'all can say what y'all want to say on this internet. The six souls is not no busters, man. And I'm not taking up for these dudes neighborhood or anything because we didn't have our issues with these dudes as well. But that ain't got nothing to do with keeping it 100. We all got issues with everybody. That's just a it seemed to be a black thing. Black people just that's just how we do, man. We we just seem to can't get along for nothing in the world. But these dudes is not no busters, no gang members, no hoods out here. Is Busters and Soft in L.A., Compton, Washington, Long Beach, where no, no, there we got you do have Busters in every hood. You do have Marks in every hood. You do. You have a snitch in every hood. That's just that's just that's just how I go. But the majority is not no Busters. So whoever on the Internet associating Big U with this interview, y'all doing the work of the police. I just got to keep it gangster. You guys are doing the work of the police. You guys are playing detective and you guys are using it in the, the you. You guys are using content to do it. Oh, it's all content. Oh, we are. Uh, we uh, what they call it. We are uh, 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 reporters. Yeah. Reporting to who? Because a lot of stuff that y'all reporting, the public shouldn't even know about it. Y'all are working for the poll. Police doing the police job. A lot of you dudes would take your own people down, knock them down, but you go let the George Zimmermans and all them people live when they do crimes. Y'all want to go bust the windows out, set the buildings on fire, but when your own people go do something, you want to knock them down. In the words of Charleston White, yeah, a lot of this stuff. Uh, this internet stuff is getting way, way out of control. It's getting way out of line. And I can guarantee you, a lot of this stuff that's going on, just mark my words, trust me, will be used in somebody's court case down the line. This will be used in somebody's trial. A lot of these dudes are getting so comfortable being in front of this microphone, getting so comfortable with running their mouths and talking, they don't understand that you guys are helping somebody's case in the future. The DA, you guys are helping the DA solve a case. All in what? Content. If these dudes on the internet can do this on the internet, just imagine if pressure was on them. Because I've seen a whole lot of people I seen a whole lot of people bringing this man name up, associating it with this black sound interview. That's not cool. Now, it's a lot of people that says otherwise they believe it. They believe everything that these people are saying. And that's that's your choice. You have, you know, you had a right to believe what you want to believe. But let the police do their job. Let the feds solve whatever case they need to solve. They didn't already arrested somebody for this. Somebody is doing a life 
sittings behind the Nipsey Hussle thing. And that guy facing all that time, he even kept it gangster. Because if somebody did send him on a mission with no permission, he haven't said anything to get himself out of jail. Matter of fact, we never even seen that man on a stand. I don't believe I've seen him on the stand. Now, I might be wrong. I haven't seen Eric Holder on the stand. So he even knew to keep his mouth shut. He kept it more gangster than a lot of these dudes on the Internet. He didn't say, oh, so-and-so sent me. He didn't say, oh, the police sent me. He didn't even, if the police did send Eric Holder, he didn't even tell on the police. If these dudes did send him, he didn't tell on nobody. He, did, he took his time and did what he had to do. You know what I'm saying? Whatever transpired between him and Nipsey Hussle in that parking lot was just, it was just a messed up, the wrong place at the wrong time. Y'all heard Black Sam said, and listen, I want y'all to go back and look at the interview. Black Sam said, when Hussle pulled up, it's a protocol. I got a pistol on me. Dude at the door got a pistol on him. They got to be strapped every time Hustle pull up. So what did that tell y'all? This was a dangerous environment. That store, that location was dangerous. Why do you have to have firearms when you pull up to your business? Your establishment. It's just a matter of time before anything could have transpired. This could have happened. It, let's just say it wasn't Eric Holder. This was a dangerous environment. Whenever you got to step out and have a firearm just because one person pull up, it's a dangerous environment. Why do you have to live like that? When you see people go to work at these other buildings and companies, they not like that. They have an armed security guard outside for people that's trying to come in and rob the place. But we don't have a firearm sitting right here like the president. That was a dangerous location. They knew it. That's why they were strapped every time. Hustle pulled up. The man said it out of his own mouth. So the location was not a good location for business. But I get it. I understand that you want to do something in the hood and you want to show the youth that, hey, I can do this. You can do this. I get the whole thing. I get it. But at the same time, like I said in my interview, the people closest to you are going to be the first one to do you. And when I say that, anybody, because the person that took Nipsey out was somebody they knew. That's the only thing we could take from this. We could say Eric Holder did what he did. But we can't put nobody else in this in this position or in this predicament and put the blame on them and say they had something to do with this. When the police haven't even said that, when the police haven't even Implement it or brunk him in it. Now they can say, oh, he works for the police department or whatever the case may be. Man, that's, listen, bro. Y'all need to grow up and let the police do their job and quit doing police work. It's Count the Rick Robert, Count the Rick Rock TV. Go on to the next one.